at all. But here, you know, we have this kind of, I think it's a false sense of hope that we can bring about, you know, kind of radical change, like what people think they can do. Uh, but I, I think, yeah, I think it's misplaced, sometimes a misplaced, but, I, uh, you know, kind of where, where should we putting our energies into, into the outcry for what, what is happening in society like that? Or are we, you know, discipling and mentoring the yeah. next generation, the people that are sitting in the chairs, one another, having a posture of one another, how we act on Facebook. You know, basically, Paul is kind of telling him that kind of thing, like, you know, be a good citizen, meaning what you say on Facebook, on Instagram, or whatever thing that you, when you're a keyboard warrior, what are you, how are you replying to people? How, you know, what kind of posture do you, what are you, do they see you as an angry person, or do they, you know, is there, are you being Christ like? Hey, welcome to Whitefields Community Church Sermon Extra. Great to have you with us once again this week. And I am with Pastor Jason Crowley. He is our executive pastor here at Whitefields Community Church here in Longmont, Colorado. And uh, he brought us the word on Sunday. And we were looking, we're in our series, Equipped to Serve, as we've been looking at uh, Paul's pastoral epistles to Timothy and to Titus. And this week we found ourselves in Titus chapter 3, verses 1 uh, through 5, and entitled, How God's Goodness Changes Our Lives. And so if you missed that sermon on Sunday morning, you can grab it off our website or our, you know, whitefieldschurch.com. Uh, you can grab it in the app if you want to as well. You can download that at the App Store or Google Play. And of course, course, it'll, it'll push a notification to you when our live services are starting. And of course, it gives you all kinds of other things that are happening at the church. And then, of course, YouTube, Facebook, all those places you can find it streamed there and any of your favorite uh, podcasting platforms as well. And if you would interact at all with the content, it certainly helps. Like and subscribe or, or rate and review or any of those kind of things. It just kind of pushes the content up. You know, when people are Googling questions about is God really good? You know, what these kind of things. And, you know, we're going to pop up to the top of their search, their search engine and, uh, you know, hopefully provide them with Christ-centered, gospel-centered answers to their questions. And so, Jason, this week we find ourselves Titus uh, 3. And, and I think the, you know, we just want to kind of, somebody came up to you right after, you know, the church, uh, after his service on Sunday. And, you know, the that first verse it's something Paul has talked about already, but it was verse one of chapter three. It says, remind them to be submissive to rulers and authorities, to be obedient, to be ready for every good work, to speak evil of no one. And um, so we just kind of wanted to talk about that idea of what, what does it mean to be submissive to rulers in our day and age, you know, even compared to Paul's day and age, what was he facing back in, in those days? And, you know, you're, you can maybe talk about the, the question that you were asked and, and, you know, we can think through that because I think, you know, maybe, you know, other people had the same, same question. Yeah, yeah. When, um, you know, Paul's really talking about here is that idea of, you know, obeying the government and being the best citizen that we can be. If we're going to be citizens of, well, for them, the Roman Empire, if they were a citizen of the Roman Empire, they were going to be the best Roman citizens that they could be. And that was uh, a Christian, uh, really a Christian ethic that he's trying to to, to portray here. Uh, Jesus was that way. And uh, the question that we got was, okay, so we're called to uh, obey the government, and that means pay taxes. And if we're called to pay taxes and the government does not spend the money on things that are, well, Christ-like, for example, in this occasion, it was abortion. Well, we knowingly uh, pay money to a government that supports abortion and pays for abortion. How can we do that? What's, and there's a dilemma there. You know, we're paying for, uh, we're, we're paying taxes because we're obeying the government. We're, uh, that it's funding abortion that, uh, is against God's law, against God's commands. So, uh, the question was, you know, it's a real question. And, uh, I'm sure if this one individual asked it, other people are asking it too. So that's why we're, we're talking about this. And so really it, it comes down to a couple of different things. One, I think the, the foundational idea is that we're called, as, as Paul said in Titus, as Paul said in Romans 13, as Paul said, or I'm sorry, Peter actually said in 1 first, uh, first Peter, can't remember the reference there, but um, 
that we are called to obey the government. And we will be held liable if we don't obey the government. As, as Paul says in, in uh, Romans 13, if we, that we'll, we'll be judged if we don't obey the government. And so knowing that we have to obey the government and knowing that Jesus has said, uh, give to Caesars what is Caesars. And during Jesus' time, during Paul's time, we have... Uh, Caesars or emperors that are really, you know, they are what they're spending our tax, their taxpayer money on is not Christ-like activities. Um, they are spending money on, you know, wiping out society. Sometimes they're going to war for unjust, or greedy reasons. I mean, they're go they're doing all kinds of things, and yet. Jesus during that time is still saying we need to pay the government and obey the rules and, and obey the government laws. And so he's saying, you know, we need to be the, the, the greatest citizens that we can be. And so we look to today and yeah, we have governments that we're called to pay taxes to that are doing things that are just horrible sometimes. And unfortunately we're, you know, when we pay that, we are, we're in a sense funding that. And so people say, you know, well, why are we doing that? And so I keep going back to the idea because one, we're called to. We're called to not support abortion. We're called to support and pay our taxes. And therefore, if a government is corrupt and a government is doing something that is wrong, we need to be the ones to be um, praying for a change. We need to be speaking out for change. We need to be praying for change. And we need to, and there's some people that have been called to go into the government and take office and make change. And so there's all kinds of ways to change the government. But unfortunately, when we have the concept of, well, if the government isn't going to uh, pay the tax, or I'm sorry, uh, spend my tax money the way I want, I'm just not going to pay, pay taxes. Uh, one, I mean, we're, we're now we've just become a criminal. And that's just isn't going to be something that, you know, I, I don't think that's Christ-like right there. So, you know, it's against God's law to, or commandments to, you know, become a criminal just because we disagree with something. Uh, even though it, that something is just, so okay. I think that's kind of uh, the foundational issue. I think there's more that we can talk about. What do you think on that? Yeah, I mean, I, I certainly sympathize with with the question. I think, um, you know, living in living in Eastern Europe for 20 years, I really didn't think about taxes, governments, or anything like that. You know, in many ways, my first couple of years, I mean, the language barrier, there's cultural barriers, there's a lot of things. All I really had in my hand was the gospel and the Bible, and that's kind of all I did, you know. So that's, you know, in a sense, that was all I had. But then, in a sense, it's the Bible says that the gospel is the power unto salvation. And so it's something that I relied on. And, and you know, I kind of, yeah, I remember 2016 sitting across, you know, in Budapest. We were with a couple other Americans that were there and just kind of laughing at the chaos that was happening here <laughs> for the 2016 election and and all of that stuff. And it was it was hilarious, uh, you know, because I was I was seeing it from afar you know, and just a lot of the stuff that was happening on Facebook. But I really, it didn't really like, um, I wouldn't say I connected with it in any way because it was just not on my radar. Like I, I could care less about politics. But then now since moving back here to the States, um, I see the, the, the responsibility that many people feel to bring about change within the political system. And I see the conflict, you know, that, that people have on how to do that. Like they want to see something change. They see the corruption. They see all of these things. And, and there's this outcry and they feel like they have, you know, we have some kind of power where, you know, a lot of people in Eastern Europe had zero power into com communism. Right. And, you know, you go to China, zero zero power down there or a lot of these you know south american countries zero power for political change and so what do you rely on well you rely on the gospel and you rely on the bible and you rely on just teaching people but here we have a sense of like we can we can change things within our within within our government and i think uh 
you know, that kind of gives us a, a sense of hope, but maybe hope placed in the wrong thing sometimes. I don't think it's wrong to want to see things change in the government. I just wonder if we're doing it the right way. I remember 2020 getting, uh, we were, got an, um, uh, something in the mail from a church here in Longmont telling me, basically, I got a card that says if I didn't vote for Trump, that I was God's enemy. That was, that was what the card told me. Wow. Yeah, from a church here in Longmont. So, you know, you kind of have somebody's putting all their baskets in this one individual to change the entire country, um, you know, and, you know, I'm not going to fight fight with them over whether, you know, <laughs> I, I don't think I'm God's enemy. But, um, you know, I think, you know, what do we what do we do with all that, with all that passion, all that change and and those those kind of things? Well, I think, f- you know, from my perspective, I, I kind of bring that same Eastern European you know where I where I spent so much of my life, perspective into the in the church here. If if there are people that are wanting to get into politics or want to get into the social, uh, you know, activities within our within our city within our state, then I want to give them what I believe is the tools that can help them be the best citizen they can do. And that's just preaching them the gospel. You know, teaching you know singing Christ centered gospel centered songs, fellowship that revolves around loving one another, esteeming one another, having a posture of of love even with people that we disagree with um, and these kind of things giving them the tools and if I truly believe and I think it comes down to a question of sovereignty and I, and I think that's what Paul addresses in in chapter 13 mm-hmm. of Romans is is do we really believe that God is sovereign do we really believe that the person that is in government right now was put there by God yeah. Uh, you know, and what is our responsibility for that? I think that's a question we all have to ask ourselves and have to wrestle with. We have to wrestle with God's sovereignty. Do I trust God enough? <laughs> you know, and when you go to a place like China, if you go to a place, pr- uh, place like China or communist Russia or wherever it might be, that question's kind of answered for you because you have zero control over what's going, you know, right. at all. But here, you know, we have this kind of, I think it's a false sense of hope that we can bring about, you know, kind of radical change, like what people think they can do. Uh, but I, I think, yeah, I think it's misplaced, sometimes a misplaced by, uh, you know, kind of where, where should we putting our energies into, into the outcry for what, what is happening in society like that? Or are we, you know, discipling and mentoring the yeah. next generation, the people that are sitting in the chairs, one another, having a posture of one another, how we act on Facebook. You know, basically, Paul is kind of telling him that kind of thing, like, you know, be a good citizen, meaning what you say on Facebook, on Instagram, or whatever thing that you, when you're a keyboard warrior, what are you, how are you replying to people? How, you know, what kind of posture do you, what are you, do they see you as an angry person or do they, you know, is there, are you being Christ-like? Is it, you can disagree with people and still be Christ-like. And, right. But I, I do, I do sympathize because it's something I wrestle with and I also wrestle with my responsibility and, you know, bringing about, you know, I know that as a Christian that I want to have an influence, not just in the church, but, you know, in, in society as large and that I'd like to see, you know, more, you know, Christian people in government and social services and, and all these kind of things. And so yeah. I think it's a valid question, certainly. To ask. Yeah. And, and I, I like how, you know, you kind of got back to the gospel there. And I think that that's really the key is, you know, we should be 100 percent. The number one thing is about God and the gospel. Jesus Christ, number one thing. And sharing that with others, raising people up who are going to be disciples who are reproducing disciples. And that to me, if we're focused on that and, you know, and maybe a number two or three, maybe down the road is something, you know, government change. I think once we spread the gospel through the land, then we have people who have a gospel mentality. They have a gut. They're going to vote the gospel. They're going to, you know, and we have people who are going to, in turn, because of who we are, the nation is going to change. And I think that that to me is the number one thing is discipling people, praying for people, making relationships, bringing the gospel into marriages and into families. And that in turn will change a nation. Uh, I think we're starting in the wrong direction. You know, we want to change, but then we often think, well, if we just vote the change, but you know, 
we, we're losing track of a, a nation that's, you know, losing God more and more every day. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. And, and, and I, I think that's the key. You know, I don't, I'm certainly you need to vote. You have the right to vote. There's yeah, people that have died. Absolutely. You died know, for that I was honor. in the Marine Corps. You know, it's, there are people that have died for the, your right to do a lot of things for the freedoms that we have here in this country. We yeah. should so certainly not take any of that for granted. Uh, we thank God for that. There are people dying every day in Africa for their faith, every day in China for their faith, locked up. We have the freedom uh, to, to be who we are, to, to gather on a Sunday morning and all of that kind of thing. But I think we cannot take that for granted. That, you know, we, we still need to be doing the basic things of gospel ministry, being Christ-like, loving one another. What is the face? What is the face that people see? What is the, you know, you are the, the, the only Bible that people might read, you know, the kind of cliche kind of thing, but it's cliche because it's true, you yeah, know? Right. And, and God has chosen us, you know, it's his wisdom, <laughs> the wisdom of God, you know, the foolishness of man. <laughs> yeah. And he's chosen the weak amongst to be, to, to, to show his strength and greatness. And, and so we are those vessels that he has chosen to use. And we need to press into that and ask God how he wants us to influence, you know, our families, our workplaces and out that way. And as you said, instead of starting at the top, hey, let's go and get rid of the president of the United States. Hey, let's start. <laughs> In our local communities <laughs> right. and having influence as, you know, just helping your neighbors, uh, being kind to somebody across the street, you know, or whatever it is and being that fragrance of Christ to all those you come, in, you know, into contact with. And then praying for those that are, you know, there might be politicians mm, in the yeah, church and, and those that are working and standing with them, praying with them, you know, asking God to give them wisdom, give them influence and all those kind of things. Those things are all on the table. We don't want to be build a fence, you know, and nobody comes into our little exclusive Christian group. We want yeah. we want to be influencing culture as much as we are. But being angry um, about everything that's happening is, you know, people are. I always when people get angry, I'm like they're just acting. They're the the flesh does not know the things of the spirit. They're they the act they're acting as as. They're sinners. They're in. They're broken. It's we're in a broken world. It's just that's the way it is. Why are we surprised? Yeah. Why are we you surprised <laughs> that uh, you know a broken world is acting broken? Broken. You know. <laughs> and and so I, I I don't get angry with those kind of things. I don't get huffed and puffed. I you know all I do is Lord, how can I bring your change? You are the Savior. You have come to fix this. How? Can we bring that to bear on yeah. that particular situation? So, but I think it's a valid question. I think mm -hmm. it's one that people are, are, you know, on every level. I don't, th I think it's a nuanced question yeah. that doesn't have a, 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 a kind of size fits all answer to it. I think we all need to wrestle with that in our own sphere of how do we submit to their, you know, the governments and things like that. And I think you brought up on Sunday as well that there are instances where we are to, you know, Absolutely. say, no, you know, yeah. I will not do this. You cannot tell me that I cannot preach the gospel. And, and, you know, people have done that through, you know, I met many missionaries taking Bibles, preaching the gospel and all those kind of things in, in Eastern Europe and in Afghanistan and out in North Korea and China and all these places got thrown in jail, died for it, you know, all kinds of things, you know, over the centuries. And, and so there, we certainly have a history of that and we want to, you know, go with that as well. But, but it's a great question, great yeah. question. So, but there you go. I mean, just one question today, we kind of something for you to think on. What do you think about that? You know, as far as role of Christians, you know, what do you think about paying to Caesar? What is Caesar's, you know, well, what, what, what is a good answer to that question when Jesus said, you know, he's paying, pay to Caesar. What was Caesar doing with that money? You know, what does that have our role? You know, as you as a taxpayer, you know, might feel like you're, you know, your money is going to abortions, which means we're funding abortions or we're funding whatever nefarious thing that governments are doing nowadays. And, uh, you know, I think that's something to wrestle with, you know, and kind of get back to the foundation of what is it that God's called us to do as Christians and, and what is the gospel? And do we actually believe that the gospel is the power unto salvation? And how can we bring that into our various spheres? So just some questions to think about this week. And again, if you missed our sermon, whitefieldschurch.com. And we look forward to seeing you again next week. God bless.